as part of the collaborative project between the European Union and UNESCO aimed at restoring Silk Road heritage sites. Significant restoration work was completed at Kazakhstan's medieval settlement of Kulan, said EU ambassador to Kazakhstan Kastutis Yankauskas in an exclusive interview to the New Time. According to the diplomat, the project will also promote archaeological discoveries along the Silk Road territory. Apart from it, Mr. Jankowskis also emphasized the mobilization of 10 billion euros for the development of the Trans-Caspian International Transport Route, the so-called Middle Corridor. What other plans does the European delegation in Kazakhstan have for closer transport connectivity with Central Asia? Find out right now in the interview. Mr. Ambassador, uh, thank you for joining us. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, let me start from this point. Uh, since 2018, European Union, in collaboration with UNESCO, has been working on a project, uh, namely Silk Road Heritage Corridors in uh, Central Asia. Uh, what outcomes can you share with us uh, from six years of this initiative? My pleasure uh, to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, uh, European Union teamed up with UNESCO. UNESCO, as you know, is the uh, world-class cultural experts, the best there are. Uh, so it's a joint project uh, where we worked with all countries in Central Asia uh, on the identification, restor preservation, restoration and marketing mm -hmm. of the unique cultural heritage. Uh, along the Silk Route, the ancient Silk Route, which is in a way a brand name uh, for uh, Central Asian countries. And it's the way that also binds Central Asia with, the Europe, with Europe, with European Union today. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to build the future uh, looking and basing it on the past. We need to know our culture, our identity, our heritage. So this project was to, first of all, identify the best that there is. And in a way, five Central Asian countries are bound by the network of these ancient Silk Route, um, each of them having unique uh, cultural heritage, uh, diverse, but it binds these countries together. So the project was to identification and then training the restoration workers, archaeologists, museum workers so that uh, this uh, unique heritage, like for example in Kazakhstan, uh, we worked on the Kulan settlements, that's between mm -hmm. Almaty and, and Taras. And one of the cities was also renovated within this project, right? In, yes. In Kazakhstan. Yes, mm -hmm. and then um, we worked on training the experts, because for example, Kulan uh, settlement has unique uh, wall carvings, which will be then open to the public, both local and international mm -hmm. tourism. And then how to market it, uh, training of local guides, uh, tourist guides, uh, presenting virtual uh, tours, um, marketing it on internet. So if you Google today the Silk Route, mm -hmm. uh, you will have uh, very, very well done uh, museum exhibitions and uh, uh, the Silk Route presented for those who are interested, for those who are planning to travel to Central Asia. So it's preservation and marketing of the uh, mm -hmm. cultural heritage. So what are the plans of uh, two bodies, EU and uh, UNESCO, within this project for these coming two years? We have, we have worked for several mm -hmm. years right now. Uh, I think uh, the project gave the basis, mm -hmm. uh, the basis for, uh, for future. Let's see, I think uh, now uh, there is a good network of experts in Central Asia itself. They are connected to the world-class experts. And that network will continue working because we never, uh, there is never a limited or a final uh, set of the cultural heritage mm -hmm. uh, sites. Uh, I believe the archaeologists will uh, you know, continuously discover more. And that what is discovered needs to be presented, preserved and made available for people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kazakhstan and European Union have been closely working on the uh, development of Middle Corridor. What can you say about this, uh, this initiative? Uh, what project can we expect between the two parties in order to better integrate within this project? Indeed, uh, we, c we, we call it a Trans-Caspian Transport Corridor. Yes. Uh, it unites Central Asia with the European Union. Uh, in a way, we're working to revive this uh, ancient Silk Route, uh, mm -hmm. where the traders and camels and caravans were, 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 were passing. 
passing goods, passing culture. Uh, in a way, that's how we connected, that's how we learned about each other, that's how we traded. Um, well, let me put it very simple. Mm -hmm. um, what to do? Uh, for that, we did the study with European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, mm -hmm. identifying where the bottlenecks are all along the route. Because it's not enough to develop one part, but if there will be no ships or no port or no crane capacity or no trains, Mm -hmm. The whole route will not work. The corridor, the route is, uh, you need to work it on as a, as a whole. So we identified what needs to be done, where are the uh, priority areas. So what, Second, what is it? What needs to be done? Oh, it, it, it's mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. but we are now really, every country along the route is working on that. And that brings me to my second point. Second one is how to do that, how to connect everyone so uh, countries would be aligned in a addressing these bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. uh, recently in Astana, on the uh, 12th of June, we launched the coordination platform. And that platform unites all five countries in Central Asia, countries in the European Union, all the countries along the corridor, Turkey, countries of uh, South Caucasus. Mm -hmm. And then it brings also in the international financial institutions, those who have resources, and our uh, G7 partners. And last but not least, is there a money? Yes, there is a budget, money. Yes. Uh, there is a budget. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier in January in Brussels, we had an uh, investment forum for this uh, transport mm -hmm. corridor. We raised 10 billion euros. Mm -hmm. So now the time has come, and we just addressed this in the platform, a business platform with the Prime Minister a few days ago, saying we need feasibility studies because we need to take that resources and mm -hmm. start implementing and building what needs to be built. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.